I, I hit record, Kevin. Are you, you're taking it to Facebook? I'm doing Facebook. One second. And if you can admit people too, or actually, if, and if you want to make, well, I don't know if Adam wants to do that. Yeah, you're going to have to be in charge of admitting people, okay? That's fine. So keep an eye on that. Looks like we're live. Yes? It's going. <clears throat> yep, we're live.
Grace and peace to you and welcome to worship with First Presbyterian Church of Warren. We welcome you whether you are here on Zoom with us or you're watching on Facebook or maybe even later on YouTube or a website. We welcome you here to this time and space. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And today we are going to celebrate that just as the sun rises again and again, so does God bring life out of death again and again. We're going to be talking about sunrises today. So Kevin is our liturgist. Kevin, I am wondering, what is your favorite place to watch a sunrise? I actually have two. Um... Mount Haleakala in Hawaii and Maui. And then there's a place in Brazil. It's a little town called Buzios. Um, some of the best sunrises you'll ever see. Well, mine is a little closer to home in Michigan, <laughs> um, up on Higgins Lake. I saw one of my camp friends here with us, Katie. So my favorite sunrise is on Higgins Lake. Um, if you would like to write your favorite, where your favorite place to watch the sunrise is in the chat or in the comments, I'd invite you to do so now, even as we turn our hearts and minds to the worship of God. Kevin, will you lead us in our call to worship? This day is like every other day. Alarm clocks beeped, covers were removed, coffee was brewed, weary bodies came to life. And yet this day is like no other day. For the sun rose and we knew it was a miracle. The tomb was empty and they knew it was love. So again and again we say, The longest night is over. Death has lost its sting. Jesus is among us. Alleluia. Amen. Again and again and again. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn of praise is Jesus Christ is Risen.
Friends, the spirit of God helps us in our weakness, interceding with sighs too deep for words. So trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Beloved community, before God and before you, my family, I confess. I have seen the sun rise and withheld my praise. I have seen my neighbor suffer and withheld my aid. I have seen love extended and chosen to walk away. I have seen divisions deepen and managed to remain unfazed. Kevin, will you read the all part for me? We hear you, we see you, you, for, you are forgiven. God's love is like the sun. No matter how lost we are in the, in the night, day after day, the light will find you. Rest easy, you are held in God's warmth. Thanks be to God. Amen. <clears throat> now we must pray, beloved friend, before God and before each other, we confess. We have seen the sun rise and withheld our praise. We have seen our neighbors suffer and withheld our aid. We have seen love extended and chosen to walk away. We have seen division deepen and managed to re remain unfazed. I hear you. I see you. You are forgiven. God's love is like the sun. No matter how lost we are in the night, day after day, the light will find you. Rest easy. You are held in God's warmth. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Friends, hear the good news of God's promise. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Friends, I'd invite you to share a sign of peace. If you'd like to unmute for a minute or share a sign of peace in the comments or the chat. Peace to everyone. Happy Easter. Peace. Happy Easter. Peace. Happy Easter. Happy peace with everybody. Be with you all. Happy Easter. Peace to everyone. Peace. Happy Easter. Peace to everyone. Peace. I'd invite um, any children who are with us to come a little closer. Um, let's stop the share. Kevin, if you could spotlight me, that'd be great. So I am wondering for the adults and the children, I am wondering if you have ever gotten a present that you didn't understand what it was. Did you ever get something? Maybe it was something even handmade or you just didn't know what to do with it. I've gotten some things in boxes before that I'm like, huh, I don't know what this is. <laughs> Does any, did anybody have anything that they can think of? The weirdest present they've ever gotten? I don't know. So did, I wonder if you've ever gotten a weird present did you ever, do you ever say thank you for the weird present too, even if you didn't know what it was? 
Yeah. You say thank you. That's for sure. Well, on the first Easter morning, the women, the women disciples got a really weird present that they didn't know what to do with either. Remember on Friday, they had watched Jesus die and they were really sad. And on Saturday, Saturday, they couldn't even attend the funeral because it was the Sabbath day. So the first thing on Sunday, as soon as they could, they went to the tomb expecting to take care of Jesus's body and to prepare him for his funeral. But what happened when they got there? Jesus wasn't there. It was weird. And that's not at all what they expected. And then on top of that, there's a strange man sitting where Jesus should be telling them wild stories about Jesus being alive, even though the woman, women saw him die on a cross. The Bible says that they were afraid. I think I would be too. We don't always understand the gifts that God gives us, but thanks be to God for strange miracles like the risen Christ who brings us new life. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for miracles we don't always understand. Help us to be on the lookout for new life in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Kevin, will you lead us in our prayer for illumination? There are a million ways to ways that you speak to us. God of the garden and God of the empty tomb. You speak to us in rituals, both formal and organic, in drops of water on our foreheads, in vows set at the altar, through piece of bread, through pieces of bread dipped in ordinary wine, and through shared candlelights on Christmas Eve. You speak to us in nature, your artistry showing up in starry nights, in the small smell of pine, in rushing waters and in most every sunrise. You speak to us through our relationships, the comfort of a loved one, the laughter of our friends, the security of those who support us and cheer us on. You speak to us in so many ways and we are grateful for them all. However, today we just need one that would be enough. So lean down and breathe life into those scattered texts. We are craving to hear your word like never before. We are craving to understand, to see ourselves in the story. We are craving proximity to you. There are a million ways that you speak to us. Today, we just need one. With hearts full of gratitude, we pray, amen. Our gospel reading this morning is from Mark uh, 16, 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, the mother of James and Selman, brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were there on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw the young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the si right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell the disciples and Peter, he is risen, going ahead of you into, into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Mark's gospel ends this way. Overcome with terror and dread, they fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Whenever it is year B in the lectionary, like it is this year, the year where we focus on Mark's gospel, I always choose to read Mark's version of the Easter story on Easter morning. Now I know if you were here for the sunrise service, you heard John's version of what happened. Preachers get the choice between Mark and John's version in year B. And at a service outdoors, John's story is the way to go. There's more action, more garden, more Jesus even. But this year, Mark's version of the story seems to just fit more with our times. Mark's version of the story leaves all the seams still dangling, a story left unfinished, 
the women flee from the tomb in terror and dread. And they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. What happened, Mark? Did we miss it? Was there more to the story that we misplaced? Now, some throughout the century sure thought so. If you look in your Bible, you will see later endings, additions to this unsatisfactory ending. But most scholars think, no, we have not been deceived. Mark is making a different kind of statement in his resurrection story. Mark's gospel is straightforward, no frills, eight verses to tell the greatest story of all time. It goes by so fast, we aren't even sure what happened. Those poor women on that first morning aren't so sure what happened either. They have been so traumatized from their experience over the last few days that even good news sounds just more confusing and even terror-filled for them. Now, this Easter, we aren't so sure quite yet if the, if the news is good or where the good news is to be found. The virus is surging in our area yet again, even though vaccines rolled out in record time. As a nation, we mourn for the over 550,000 who have died from COVID this past year. We are mourning those recently lost to gun violence. We have many in our own church community hurting and struggling with illness, with depression, with life. We've come here today to hear this story once again, to hear the angel's words, to see the empty tomb, but we, like those women, are still sitting in the midst of the trauma of our experiences of this last year. Shouting Alleluia still feels a little pointed, too harsh, too loud, too much to bear. We hear what the angel is telling us. Don't be alarmed. He's not here. He has been raised. He came back from the sanctuary. But we have not yet fully, con- <laughs> but we have yet to fully connect the words to the reality of this world that we are seeing around us. We have yet to fully connect the words to the reality of our broken hearts. And yet here we are, Easter Sunday, 2021. What do we know now that we didn't know at Easter 2020 when we last heard this story a year ago? Well, we know that we can do and endure hard things. We know that we have been changed though we don't fully understand how. We know that we long for good news, even though we can't fully imagine what that good news will look like or feel like. We know that we need hope now more than ever. We also know, or we can take a moment to acknowledge that since Easter 2020, Without our help, the sun, the sun has managed to rise each day. Our planet has spun in orbit at 1000 miles per hour, bringing us a sunrise here in Michigan every morning, even if it's cloudy. Without our help since Easter 2020, the earth has traveled in an orbit around the sun, 584 million miles around. Without our help, without depending on us, the sun rises. The sun rose each day, bringing us light, even though sometimes it was dark clouds of rain or snow. Again and again, the sun rises. Now, 2,000 years ago, without the help of those first disciples, without any human's help, without us even knowing or understanding how it happened, without any humans even witnessing it firsthand, resurrection happened. From the dreariness and hopelessness of death, without our help, resurrection happened. Resurrection is 
God's work, not ours. Thanks be to God. It does not depend on us. Thanks be to God. We do not even need to understand it or get it to be able to, or be able to explain it. And somehow this alone is good news to me this year. Because I'm guessing like many of you, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted from feeling like every choice I make is weighty. Like the health of myself and friends and family depends on everything I do or decide to do or not to do. I'm exhausted from the feeling like I can't do enough to keep those I love safe. I can't do enough to help or be present or know how to make things right. I'm exhausted. Maybe like those women who came to the tomb were also exhausted. And so good news to me this year and this familiar story sounds like resurrection not depending one bit on me and what I do or don't do on whether I have the right response to it or not, or even the right sermon. God in the infinite energy and love of the universe broke into our time and space, broke into our brokenness and grief and despair and exhaustion, broke into the tomb without any help from us and brought life out of death. That is the good, good news. And yet this story of God bringing life out of death without our help was given to us to become our story too. Debbie Thomas writes, we know from the complete witness of the four gospels that the frightened silence of the women on Easter morning eventually gave way to proclamation. Their alarm subsided, their courage deepened, their trauma healed and their amazement grew. They learned how to choose hope. They learned how to make the story their own. And as they did, their story blossomed and grew. Joy came, faith came, peace came, love came. And slowly the glorious truth of a conquered grave and a risen Messiah made its way from their emboldened lips to every corner of the world. The story didn't depend on them, but it changed them. And as they changed the world around them changed too. Friends hear this good news that doesn't depend on us, but nonetheless can change us just as the sun rising doesn't depend on us, but nonetheless brings life to us and to our world. Hear this good news. Love never ends. Hear this good news. God has conquered death. Hear this good news. Nothing will be lost. Hear this good news. We will be made whole. Hear this good news. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
Kevin, I'd invite you to lead us in our affirmation of faith. We know the fear of the upper room. We know the feeling of hard days and long nights. We know the grief of the tomb and the particular ache of saying goodbye. We know the pain of Good Friday and we know the darkness before dawn. And still, and still we believe. We believe that again and again, the sun will rise and again and again, God will draw near. Again and again, we will march towards justice. Again and again, the tomb will be empty. Again and again, love will win. Again and again, God will lead the church. Again and again, and again and again, we will be loved. The journey will not be perfect. We will need to rise before dawn. We will need angels along the way. But again and again, the sun will rise. We believe. Amen. Amen. Friends, just a few quick announcements about what's happening. Next Sunday is still our tentative return to the sanctuary with cases rising here. We'll um, check in once again as a session and to confirm that you'll receive an email. So make sure you get our emails or you can call the church office to check in as well. Um, we will remain on Zoom for a short service at 9 a.m. And I'll make sure to send that out in our weekly email as well at 9 a.m. Um, in the newsletter and um, in the email, I'll send out too just kind of the list of the protocols that we're following here. Um, we'd ask you to obviously not come if you're sick and masks are, of course, will be required. There'll be a registration too that we'll send out um on monday morning for those to for people to register for the service so we know how many we have in our sanctuary we try to limit that the children will be having we'll be having a short um time with children right at the very beginning of the service and then they will be sent outside uh to play or if it's raining to fellowship hall um so they have space to spread out and uh, to interact and just to be together in that way. So look for news about that in our weekly email. Wednesday, we'll have Bible study. I don't know what that says, April 7th <laughs> at 7 p.m. And Mondays and Thursdays meet us on Facebook at 8 p.m. for our time of evening prayer. Friends, freely we have received, and so freely let us give. Kevin, if you can put that in our, I bet you did, put that in the chat for us, that would be great. Um, or I'd invite you to send it into the office at 3000 East 12 Mile Warren, or you can bring it next week when we're in person. Kevin, will you lead us in our prayer of dedication and thanksgiving? We praise you, O oh God, and give you thanks that you have given us such joy, such grace, such hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let our lives be proof that God, that good news, let us, let our lives be proof of the good news, that our words and actions, our love and our service bear witness to your resurrection power for the sake of our loving Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'd invite you, if you haven't already yet, to find some elements for communion, uh, some bread, some juice, some coffee or water, uh, whatever you hand on, have on hand, we uh, will make sacred together and God will make holy. I'd also invite you to place any prayer requests you might have 
in the comments on Facebook or the chat here on Zoom so we can lift them up together during this time. Friends, at this table, Jesus shows us the way, a way of love and care and welcome for all people, for all who are weary, all who are full of energy, all who are full of faith, all who are full of doubt, all who get up early to watch the sunrise, all who stay up late to watch the sunset. Jesus welcomes all to this table and shows us the way of life from death. So come all who are ready to walk, even imperfectly on this way. Let us pray together. Blessed are you, O holy God. You are the life and light of all. Again and again, you meet us where we are. Again and again, you show us the way of life. And again and again, we remember the story of Jesus, your son, who in the night he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, we remember that he took the cup and he also gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his calling, his healing, his dying and rising. Again and again, we share this holy meal and experience your salvation. By your spirit, bless us and this meal that once again, we may be refreshed by the love of your son. We offer up to you again and again the prayers that are on our hearts for Kim, who is fighting COVID, for Mark and all others on the men, for Al Brown and Shirley Brown and Joe Thompson for continued strength and health, for continued safe travel as Mary starts their journey home tomorrow. Thanksgiving that the Masanga family are here together this Easter. And I know, Kevin, there were some prayers on Facebook let me see if I can find them. We pray for the Knight family. We lift up the Knight family. We lift up all those prayers that are on our hearts. Holy God, we lift all this to you in trust and hope. And then in the name of the one who taught us to pray together, saying unmuted, our father who art in heaven, in heaven. hallowed be thy name. Be thy, name. Thy, kingdom thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will, will be done. Be done. On earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us give this day, day daily bread. bread. And, and forgive us our debts. That's we forgive our, our debtors. Better. Lead us lead not to temptation. But deliver us from evil. For, for, for thine is the kingdom and the power, and the power and 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 glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Kevin, I'd invite you when you're ready to read our prayer after communion. Gracious God, we give you thanks that by the witness of your word and the sharing of this meal, you have opened our hearts and eyes to the presence of Christ among us. Now send, send us forth from this place by the power of your Holy Spirit to tell this good news to the world. The Lord is risen indeed. Amen. 
are sending him as Christ the Lord is risen today. Friends, may the steadfast love of the Lord be yours this day and forever. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Do not be afraid. Go and tell this good news to all. Alleluia. Amen. Thanks be to God.